Hola estudiantes, bienvenidos a la clase de Español 1. Hoy vamos a estudiar capítulo 11, lección 30B. Vamos a comenzar con uh, la tarea uh, en el cuaderno, página 213 hasta 215, actividades 1 y 2. Then we're going to move on into our lesson. We're going to do some review. We're going to review our summer vacation vocab, our verse, Romans 5.8. We're going to look a little bit more at the country of Peru. We'll review our pronunciation of the consonant sound G, G, and J. We'll look at our cognates, changing English verbs that end in F-Y into Spanish verbs that end in F-I-C-A-R. We'll review the preposition para. We'll review the conjugation of our irregular preterite verbs and then new grammar today. We will take a look at the preposition por and talk a little bit about how that word is different from the preposition para. So let's go ahead and get started with our homework check for today. We'll review that, go over it and check some answers. Remember, if you have not finished your homework for today, you should not proceed in this video. So go ahead and pause the video now. Make sure you have your homework done and that it's been checked by your teacher. And then we'll move on and check your homework. All right, I hope you have that homework out and done in front of you, and we'll take a look and check the answers. Actividad 1, la preposición para. Los señores Alonso acaban de volver de vacaciones. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Alonso just returned from vacation. Tienen regalos para los miembros de la familia. They have gifts for their family members. Un libro, una cámara, una pluma de plata, una raqueta de tenis, una caja de chocolates, un disco compacto. ¿Quién va a recibir qué regalo? Who is going to receive what gift? So let's look at the modelo together here. This is the example. A Roberto le gusta leer. So Robert likes to read. Literally, this sentence is translated, to read pleases him. It goes backwards. You remember how that works. To read pleases him. And then just for clarification, we know that the him refers to a Roberto. So literally, this is to read pleases Robert. So since Robert likes to read so much, it's clear that el libro es para él. The book is for him. And notice the accent mark over él. The book is for him. Número uno. A Mariana le gusta escribir cartas. Mariana likes to write letters. So la pluma de plata es para ella. The silver pen is for her. Número tres. A Maritza le gusta sacar fotos. Maritza likes to take pictures. So la cámara es para ella. The camera is for her. Número cinco, the last one. A la abuela le gusta la música de guitarra clásica. Uh, grandma likes classical guitar music. So el disco compacto es para ella. The CD is for her. If you have any questions on those, let me know. Actividad B, termine la, cada oración de una manera original. End each sentence or finish each sentence in an original way. ¿Es posible terminar las oraciones con un sustantivo, un pronombre o un infinitivo? It is possible to end each sentence with a noun, a pronoun or an infinitive. So you could end these in a number of different ways. Número uno, este verano durante las vacaciones salimos para this summer during vacation. We left for a destination, Cancun, Mexico, España, Costa Rica, wherever the vacation may have taken you. Número tres, este regalo es para, this gift is for mi mamá, para mi mamá, para ti, for you, para mi profesor de español. That works. Número cinco, queremos ir al restaurante italiano para... Uh, this would be a goal. We want to eat at the Italian restaurant para comer spaghetti, para comer pasta, para comer comida excelente, in order to eat spaghetti or pasta or an excellent meal. All right, so that would be a goal, which would probably incorporate a verb in that answer as well. Actividad 2. Otros verbos irregulares. Escriba la forma correcta del pretérito de los verbos indicados. Write the correct form of the preterite of the indicated verbs. Número 1. ¿Dónde estuviste tú anoche, Roberto? Where were you last night, Roberto? Número 3. ¿Estuvieron ustedes en la casa de Rafael toda la noche? Were you all at Rafael's house all night? And then número 5, using the verb hacer... ¿Qué hicieron ustedes? Remember that hacer is one of our I group stem changers in the preterite. ¿Qué hicieron ustedes? What did you all do? Número siete. Y tú no hiciste nada, ¿eh? 
and you did nothing, eh? Hacer is an I group stem changer. And then estar, which was in the first group, remember that is a U group stem changer. It gets that U in the preterite form. Venir. Yo vine a las once y media. I came at 11.30. Uh, that is an I group stem changer in the preterite. Vine. Nicolás y Patricio vinieron conmigo. Nicholas and Patrick came with me. Nosotros vinimos para ver una película de Sherlock Holmes por televisión. We came to see a Sherlock Holmes movie on the TV. And then poder. Poder is to be able to, and it is a U-group stem changer in the preterite. Número 11. No, nosotros no pudimos porque su televisor no funciona. No, we couldn't because his television didn't work. Número 13. Sí, Nicolás lo pudo hacer sin problema. Yes, Nicholas could do it without a problem. Numero, or did it without a problem. Preterite. Numero 15. No, pero mamá lo supo. No, but mom found out about it. Mis amigos y yo no supimos nada porque nos dormimos antes de la medianoche. My friends and I didn't find out anything because we slept until noon. Late sleepers there, All right? Mark any questions that you might have, and we'll take a look at those and make sure that you understand why you missed what you missed. Actividad B. Cambie al pretérito los verbos invitar y querer en cada oración. Change to the preterite the verbs invitar to invite and querer to want in each sentence. The modelo. Le invitan a Ramón a jugar al tenis, pero él no quiere. Um, they invited Ramón to play tennis. But he didn't want to. Le invitaron a Ramón a jugar al tenis, pero él no quiso. He refused. Número uno, invitan becomes invitaron, and quiere becomes quiso in the preterite. Número tres, me invitan a ir al centro, pero no quiero. They invite me to go to the mall, but I don't want to. If we change it to the preterite, they invited me to go to the mall. Invitaron. But I refused. Pero no quise. Número cinco. Te invito a estudiar conmigo, pero no quieres. I invite you to study with me, but you don't want to. I invited, te invité, I invited you to study with me, but you refused. Pero no quisiste. Y número siete. A usted le invitan a tocar el piano, pero no quiere. They invited you to play the piano, but you don't want to. Invitaron, they invited you, and then quiso, but you refused. Pero no quiso. All right. Actividad C. Número uno, ¿cuándo supiste que el regalo de tu tía nunca llegó? When did you find out that your aunt's gift never arrived? And you could answer, say, I found out. Yo supe, and then whatever time, whenever you would have found out. Supe uh, que el regalo no llegó ayer. I found out yesterday. ¿Quién vino contigo a la escuela hoy? Who came with you to school today? You could say, mis hermanos vin vinieron conmigo. My friends came with me. Mi amigo vino conmigo. My friend came with me. Nadie vino conmigo. No one came with me. Número cinco. ¿Dónde pusiste tus libros cuando llegaste a casa? Where did you put your books when you arrived home? Los puse. I put them. Los puse en mi escritorio o en mi dormitorio. I put them on my desk or in my room. Número siete. ¿Pudieron ustedes terminar su examen a tiempo? Were you all able to finish your exam on time? ¿Pudimos terminar el examen a tiempo? ¿Pudimos? Yes. We were able to end. We were able to do our exam on time. Okay? Very good. We've been talking about the country of Peru as we've been going through uh, chapter 11. Remember, we talked about those three different regions of Peru, la costa, las montañas, and la selva. Uh, what are those three areas? La costa, las montañas, and la selva. Those three different geographical regions, la costa, the coastal plains, las montañas, the mountains, and la selva, the tropical rainforest. Three very different regions within the country of Peru. Remember that the capital of Peru is what? Lima is the capital of Peru. If you have not yet watched that video on top 10 reasons to visit Peru, I hope you take some time and watch that. I think you'll enjoy that. El versículo, we have three verses that we're reviewing for chapter 11. El primer es Primera Corintios 15, 3b. Say it with me, clase. 
1 Corintios 15, 3b. Cristo murió por nuestros pecados conforme a las Escrituras. 1 Corintios 15, 3b. El segundo versículo es Mateo 4, 19. ¿Clase? Mateo 4, 19. Y les dijo, Venid en pos de mí, y os haré pescadores de hombres. Mateo 4, 19. Y el versículo que estamos aprendiendo en esta lección es Romanos 5, 8. Clase, dígalo. Romanos 5, 8. Mas Dios muestra su amor para con nosotros, en que siendo aún pecadores, Cristo murió por nosotros. Romanos 5, 8. Let's see if we can do some of our missing words here. ¿Qué palabra nos falta aquí, clase? La respuesta es muestra, shows, muestra. ¿Y aquí qué palabra nos falta? La respuesta es aún, even or still, aún. Y número tres, ¿qué palabra nos falta? Es murió, died, murió. Número cuatro, ¿qué palabra nos falta? Nosotros, we, or us, nosotros. Número cinco, ¿qué palabra nos falta? Siendo, being, siendo. Make sure you're reviewing that verse each day. Remember, you will need to be able to write all three of these verses for our chapter 11 test. Pronunciación, we've been working on the consonant sounds of the sound G, G, and the letter, the letra J in, in Español. Remember that G, when it's followed by an E or an I, gets the soft sound, G, G, just like the, the consonant J in Español. We've been going over our cognates. These are verbs that end in F-Y in Spanish and that are translated F-I-C-A-R in Spanish. So let's look at verbs like notify, which become notificar, rectify, which becomes rectificar. What would the word signify be in Spanish? Signify would be significar. What about the word verify? What would verify be in Spanish? That would be verificar. We've been talking a lot about Peru, we already said, in this chapter. We talked about Machu Picchu, which is an important area in Peru, and we answered a few questions about that in our last lesson. Make sure that you can understand the cultural note that's here on this slide. It's in uh, Lesson 30 in your textbook as well, and be able to answer those questions. Make sure you understand and can answer them in both English and Spanish. Las vacaciones, we read that dialogue on page 247, 247 en el libro. This is a conversation between Ana and Mario as they talk about what they are doing on their vacations. Make sure that you have read that dialogue as well. We'll talk more about that as we get to our oral skills review in our next lesson. El vocabulario de esta lección, we've gone over this. You should have added this to your notes already. These are great examples of several questions and answers about what a particular person may have done on their vacation in the, over the last summer. Uh, we have words like río, el río, the river, la jungla, the jungle, las montañas, the mountains, el océano, the ocean, la playa, the beach, la arena, the sand. And we can see some of these used in preterite sentences here on this slide. Make sure you know these sentences. Make sure you know those vocabulary words as well. Yesterday, we talked about the preposition para. The preposition para is often translated for in English, but we talked about how this looks ahead most times. It is something that is headed toward an action or a person or a place or a point in time. And we did exercises for homework and in class yesterday reviewing that. Remember that as a general statement, para looks ahead. The thing that is being done, the object is going somewhere. So para looks ahead. We talked about our irregular verb conjugations yesterday. Hacer, to make or to do, is one of our I group stem changers. And so we see that I throughout the conjugated form in the preterite. Hice, hiciste, hizo, hicimos, hicieron. And then estar, to be, as in location and condition, is one of our U group stem changers in the preterite. Estuve, estuviste, estuvo, estuvimos, and estuvieron. I group and you group 
and many verbs are conjugated the same way. Remember that the endings for these I group stem changers and U group stem changers in the preterite, the endings are the same. E, iste, o, imos, and yeron. Do you notice that there is no accent mark? No accent mark in these. Make sure you remember that irregular preterite conjugations don't get those accent marks. Um, other verbs that are I group stem changers like hacer, um, are querer, which the stem becomes quis. Notice we have the I in hacer, the I in querer, and venir, we also have the I in vin. So, hice, I made, or I did, quise, I wanted, vine, I came. So, each of those keep the same endings, no accent mark, and they have that I stem change in the preterite. Then we had several that have that U stem change, just like estar. We have andar, to walk, where the stem is anduv. Anduve, I walked. Poder, to be able to. Pude, I was able to. Poner, to put or to place. Yo puse, I put. Uh, saber, to know. Supe, I found out. Tener, to have. Tuve, I had. Right, so those are the U group stem changes, and they follow the same conjugation pattern. Remember that some verbs change meaning just slightly in the preterite. Saber in the preterite, supe, means to find out. Querer in the preterite, quise, means I tried to do something. No quise is I refused. And pude, no pude is I was not able to. I tried, but I couldn't do it. Today we need to talk about the preposition por. This is a new preposition for us in grammar today, and we're going to contrast it with the preposition para. Remember, we've used para in place of the English preposition for. Para kind of looked ahead, we said. Remember, una carta llegó para mí. A letter came for me. That letter was for me. El mensaje de la Biblia es para todo el mundo. The message of the Bible is for all the world. It is headed to all the world. Para. But por, which is also often translated for in English, is a little bit different. It has very specific uses. And we've got those uses listed for you right here on the page. These uses are also listed in your textbook in Paina 253, 253 in your textbook. The word por, the preposition por, is used for duration. How long did something last? Look at the example right here in your textbook on page 253. Voy a estudiar español por tres años. I am going to study Spanish for three years. So if we're talking about a duration of time, we won't use para, we will use por. Exchange is also a use of por. Compré una cámara por 30 dólares. I bought a camera for $30. If it is an exchange for, we will not use para, we would use por. Cristo murió por mí. Christ died in place of me. If the preposition means in place of, we will use por, not para. In place of is por. By manner or means is also a use of por. Mandamos las cartas por avión. We send the letters by airplane. By manner of, by means of airplane. Por. If the preposition indicates movement, through a place, or along a place, or even among a, uh, an area, among areas, or among things, we would use por as well. Look at the last three examples here on this page. El gato entró por la puerta. The cat entered through the door. Por. Me gusta caminar por las calles de la ciudad antigua. I like to walk through the streets of the old city. Por las calles, through the streets. El puma corría por los árboles del bosque. The puma walks through the forest trees or among the forest trees. So that's por as well. Study these uses of por and work to develop an understanding of the difference between para and por. It can be a little bit tricky because they are both translated in English for, but there are two very different uses in Spanish. Let's look at some examples on Actividad 7, página 253 en el libro. Decida cómo va a mandar las siguientes cartas a sus amigas. Amigos, decide how 
uh, you're going to send the following letters to your friends. Por avión, by airplane, by means of airplane there. Por, por barco, by boat, por tren, by train, or por autobús, by bus. Let's look at the modelo together here, Clase. De Nueva York a España, from New York to Spain. All right, well, there are a few that we can cross off, right, guys? If I'm sending something by, if I'm sending something from New York to Spain, I'm going to have to cross water. So I'm not going to do it on train. I can't get a train across the water. I certainly can't get a bus across the water. So I'm going to have to send it either by airplane or by boat. So voy a mandar una carta de Nueva York a España por avión. I'm going to send a letter from New York to Spain by airplane. All right, so let's take a look at numero uno, tres, cinco y siete. Would you do these in your notes, please? You can do this on a scratch sheet of paper or on a blank area in your workbook. Tell me how you would send a letter from the first place to the second place. Which manner or which means would work the best? All right, I hope those are done. If you were to send something from Chicago to Indianapolis... Chicago to Indianapolis, you have lots of options there. You could send it by bus, by train, by boat, or by airplane. So any of those. You could say, voy a mandar una carta de Chicago a Indianapolis por, we could say, por avión, por barco, by boat. I don't know that you could send it by boat, actually. Well, um, there's not a whole lot of waterways between Chicago and Indian Indianapolis. Número tres, de Miami a Lima, from Miami to Lima, Peru. You could send it por avión, por barco, por tren, por autobús, really any of these, depending on how you would send those. If you have any questions on those, let me know. We'll look at those together and make sure you understand why you missed what you missed. Actividad 8. Actividad 8 está en página 254. Margarita visita un mercado. Ella le pregunta a un vendedor los precios. Margarita visits a market. She asks the salesperson the prices. Con un compañero de clase, haga los papeles de Margarita y el vendedor. With a classmate, play the role of Margarita and the salesperson. So let's look at the modelo here and let's see how this conversation might play out. El diccionario. Dos dólares. So the dictionary is two dollars. So Margarita would ask the question, ¿Cuánto quiere por el diccionario? How much do you want for the dictionary? And the vendedor would say, Por el diccionario, quiero dos dólares. For the dictionary, I want two dollars. So, número uno, el vestido, the dress, twenty-five dollars. Número tres, la radio, ten dollars. And el reloj, four dollars. Go ahead and do the odds, número uno, tres y cinco. Write the question that Margarita would ask and write the answer that the vendedor would give. Do one, three, and five on a scratch sheet of paper or in a blank spot in your workbook, and then we'll come back together and take a look at those answers. All right, let's check your answers, see how those went. Número uno. ¿Cuánto quiere por el vestido? How much do you want for the dress? Por el vestido, quiero 25 dólares. For the dress, I want 25 dollars. Número tres. La radio. ¿Cuánto quiere por la radio? How much do you want for the radio? Por la radio, quiero diez dólares. For the radio, I want ten dollars. Número cinco, el reloj, the watch. I guess it could be the clock as well. ¿Cuánto quiere por el reloj? How much do you want for the watch? Por el reloj, quiero cuatro dólares. For the watch, I want four dollars. If you had any trouble with those, let me know. We'll check over those. Make sure you understand why you missed what you missed. And then the last activity that we'll do for today, this one you're going to do on your own, Actividad Nueve. Use elementos de cada columna para ver cuántas oraciones puede escribir en cinco minutos. Use elements from each column to see how many sentences you can write in five minutes. Puede usar otras palabras en sus oraciones. You can use other words in your sentences. But choose one element from the first column. Choose one element from the second column and choose one element from the third column to write sentences. I've given you a sample sentence here that I've written using the first element all the way across the top, which was pretty easy to do. Yo compro un juguete por diez dólares. I buy a toy for ten dollars. So you can use extra words like I did with juguete and add them in to make your sentences make sense. So see how many of those you can write 
in five minutes. All right, I hope you got some great sentences and I look forward to hearing what those are. And that wraps things up for us today in Spanish 1 class. This was Capítulo 11, Lección 30B, Chapter 11, the second part of Lesson 30. We started with our homework check, and I hope that went well for you. We reviewed a lot of the first part of Lesson 30, including our summer vacation vocabulary, our verses that we're learning for Chapter 11. We talked a lot about Peru, the consonant sounds G, G, and J. We talked about our cognates, verbs in English that end in F-Y, and changing those two verbs in Spanish that end in F-I-C-A-R. We reviewed the preposition para and the preposition por, and we talked about the differences between those two prepositions. And we reviewed our irregular preterite verbs, talking specifically about I-group stem changers in the preterite and U-group stem changers in the preterite as well as a few of those preterites that change meaning a little bit when they're conjugated in that past tense. If you have any questions, I hope you'll let me know. I hope you're working on your language lab in Quizlet and getting that done as well. And in our next lesson, we will review using our oral skills as we prepare for our quiz in the lesson after next. Que Dios les bendiga, clase. Adios.